my actual uh, rallying started as far back as uh, 71 when I bought a second-hand uh, rally car with my cousin. Marco Allen was already doing very well in those days and uh, you know I was admiring him how well he was doing and I thought that I'm just uh, one of those Mr. Averages you know for the rest of my life. Far from being one of those Mr. Averages, today Ari Vartanen is one of the top five rally drivers in the world. Well, it was 74 I actually had my first success, but for some time nothing happened until a man called John Thomas from Maesteg in Wales. He wrote to me because he had written a little bit of uh, myself in, uh, I think in Motor News, that uh, I would like to come to England. So he contacted local Opel dealer and, uh, and uh, wrote me saying that if I if I come over to England with my Ascona, he would go drive for me and uh, he has got a sponsorship worth of 300 quid. And uh, so we came here. But let's say generally, when I came to England for the first time, I mean, when you come from Scandinavia, you think that it's pretty dirty. And, uh, you know, must, I must say that my first impression wasn't that great before I got used to it and uh, before I got used to English way of life. And uh, I must say that the longer I was here, more I liked. And, uh, you know, England, so let's say if I consider any other place to live outside of Finland, it would be, it would be England. Newcastle, England, on a dank morning in February, the start of the first round of the 1980 RAC Open Rally Championship, the Mintex. So, Harry, typical English weather again uh, here. Yeah, it is. You know, it forces me to wear these colours again. You know, it's always like this. I can't help it. Driving his Rothmans Rally Team car, the British International Championship is once again Ari Vartman's goal. But to win it, he'll have to wrest the laurels from the fastest loose surface driver in the world, his compatriot Hanu Mikola. The conditions could scarcely show off both men's techniques to greater effect. We're going faster than we can see, so we're not going to go any quicker at all. If you find somebody's taking three seconds a mile off you, and then you look at Vatten and people like that, and they're taking four, five, six seconds a mile. They've either got completely different dyes or no brain. Vartanen is being co-driven by David Richards. So he's two minutes behind us. Yes. McRae is three minutes behind. But we don't know about Rutherford, no. Driving an escort for the first time on an international, Willie Rutherford is the sensation of the rally. We've been going very sensibly, actually. Uh, just getting confidence in the car to... Particularly some of this really fast stuff where it's cresting and you're sweeping slightly left, for example, it just goes straight through as the Mazda will be sort of pulling a cigarette lighter out and this sort of thing to uh, equalise the balance and try and get it back out of the tree. Henry, what sort of night have you had? Uh, foggy. The fog's been the same for everyone, though. Yes, it is, but uh, we are not using the maps. What, what do you mean? Uh, well. The English drivers and co-drivers are using the, some kind of maps where they can read about long uh, straights and things like that and uh, we are not using that because uh, we don't have experience. Some of the drivers apparently have been, have been reading off a map and others haven't. Well, what does Jim do for you? Did, did you... Well, where it's uh, helpful, he, he tries, but uh, you know, when it, it's a strange road, uh, then you really are relying on sometimes very old maps and not to be recommended. The marked map controversy is one which will rage all year, but the real battle in the forests will never be won from the rule books. Merely staying on the road in these conditions is for many something of an achievement reflected in the special stage times. Very slow indeed. To start with because of the driver and to the to end because of the terrible misty weather. The driver? Yes, yes, yes. You know, I think I take up farming. But this is part of rallying though. Ah, it is part of the rallying, but you know, every coin has got two sides, hasn't it? Indeed, yes. indeed. But is it the mud, you mean, and the, and the rain? Yeah, that's... and, you know, visibility, 10 metres, yeah. It's the same for everybody, though. Oh, exactly, you know. I, we don't mind, but it's just, it's very wearing. And... Could Ari be suffering from fatigue, or is there something else? Jimmy McRae thinks he has the answer. A lot of the stages have been regraded, you know, and they're very loose on the top. It's just pure mud in places. Uh, we thought we'd going on to narrower tyres to try and get better grip, but they would, I think they would be even worse. Tight timing isn't helping matters either. I think the organisers are trying to toughen up a bit, are they? Yeah? So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're winning as well. 
The Mintex turns into a two-man battle, with Ari having to give best to Hanu. Do you know how far behind Hanu you are? Oh, one and a half minutes at least. Is it, are you just maintaining that gap? Yeah, that's the part. When Hanu doesn't take it seriously, then he can maintain the gap here. And when he takes it seriously, you know, then he pulls away. It's just so good. Good, yes. Brilliant, even. And in a forest escort, devastating to the opposition. Yet, when it comes to opening the champagne, he's a non-starter, despite all the practice. Here we go. Obviously, hello, hello. Now, watch yourselves. <laughs> and it's not the first time Hannah's done this. I mean, he, he doesn't know what to do with bottles of champagne. Come on, Hannah. There we go. No. I was told that there's only one rally driver in England, Roger Clark, in those days. But then there turned out to be a couple of other ones as well. And, but I should say that in those days, particularly, the standard of rallying, forgetting those few top ones, it wasn't that high in, in England. So it was, it was you know, relatively easy to get on well. has been a boost in, in rallying as far as standard of it is concerned. There are more teams around in England particularly. In those days it was only Ford and uh, nothing else really. But now we have, have many other teams which is of course good for the sport. But on the other hand the, the cost of this rallying is really escalating so it, it's much harder for, for a private driver. Some of the finest rally cars of recent years have been built and rebuilt here. From his workshops in West London, David Sutton has developed a thriving international business for producing top-class rally cars. After the tower, mate, we'll in 1980, he manages the Rothmans rally team. Okay. David, this is Ari's car, is it, for the RAC, is it? Yes, this is the, the actual car I'll be driving. You've had a very successful year with Ari this year, haven't you? Well, he's had eight second places and uh, we think that it's reliability and consistency that win championships. So we're very satisfied with his results indeed. In fact, this has got to be one of your best ever seasons. It's the best year we've ever had in the history of the company, yes. We try and give him everything that he wants. We know the specification that he likes to have, the type of steering wheel he likes, the type of suspension or engine specification he likes. And uh, once he sat in the car and tested it, he rarely complains uh, at all throughout the event. What particular things does he like then? Well, what are his special things you have to do for him? He's, he's very fussy about the position of his seat because he's very tall and very slim. He's very fussy about the position of the pedals because he's got long legs. And he's very particular uh, about the position of his steering wheel because some, on some steering wheels his, his legs in fact do come up behind the steering wheel. But we, we know the specification that he likes and sometimes, you know, we can build the car exactly how he wants it without uh, even referring to it. The circuit of Ireland, scene of some epic tussles in the past, is about to witness one of the all-time greats. Vartanen versus McRae, Escort versus Chevette, Finn versus Scott. This is a new HSR Chevette. It has a uh, different gearbox, different axle location, and slightly wider arches, which means we can use wider wheels. I mean, you can go quicker. Well, I hope so. <laughs> A dusty duel in the sun unfolds through the pastoral lanes of Ulster and Era, spurred on by huge support from every bank, hedgerow and vantage point. Yet despite the pressure, Vatnan still seems to have time to pose for photographers and wave at the crowd which is all very well and very endearing, but if you're not very careful... What about the chap who fell in the mud at the gate? Yes, yes, he's, uh, his wife wasn't too pleased, but uh, he's all right. So 
What sort of day have you had anyway? Very warm, nice, fast. Losing a little bit to Simi McRae. Why? Because he's driving so well. Very well indeed. He's a very good driver, particularly seems to be here in Ireland. And of course, car is up to his capabilities as well. Psychologically, when there is somebody ahead, does that urge you to go quicker? I think so, I think it does, you know, it gives you that wee bit, especially when they're running in front, you know, you've got the benefit of knowing that if they've made a mistake, then it, uh, at least you can slow back. Whereas if you're running, uh, if they're running behind you, you don't know what they're doing. This morning you've been consistently taking time off of him, have you? Yes, I think with the exception of two stages, we've taken time off of him each one. When the lead is only 60 seconds, it doesn't really make a difference whether you are leading or it's still the pressure is on on both of us all the time. So cannot uh, I cannot really you know relax. Jimmy took two seconds off you of that last stretch. Is Harry going flat out? Well. There's a certain limit you get to, and beyond that limit, you're just taking very big chances. And at this minute in time, we don't intend to sort of take the very big chances. We're, we're going as flat out as we would like to at this moment. There's not a lot left. The pressure's on Ari at the moment to stay in front, but uh, I think if we, can, if we can overtake him, then certainly the pressure will be on me, but I think I'll be you know, confident that we can keep these stage times up. like to be with under a, a situation like this? He's very cool, he's very calm about it and very, sort of, you know, thinks about things so we, you know, nothing's irrational, it's all sort of right, you know, let's not to get too worried about it and, um, no, they're very sensible. The duel reaches its climax with the two men separated by no more than a handful of seconds. Then, during the final night, Vartanen makes a rare mistake, leaving McRae to cruise home to a well-deserved victory and a familiar sound. <laughs> There's been rumours lately that you're beginning to lose interest in rallying. Uh, is this true? Well, if one journalist drives uh, rights in one paper that I'm getting disinterested, that's not the end of the world, is it? And, uh, but of course, rallying has never been the most important thing in my life, so, and it's, you know, definitely not, no. What is the most important thing, then? In my life, the, my faith, you know, the court. That's, you know, where your life can be grounded, not on uh, rallying. Ari, at 28, is now a family man. At the age of 27, he married Rita. And on the 7th of May, 1980, the eve of the Welsh rally, Ari became a father. It is sad in a way that I have to be so much away from home, but on the other hand, this is uh, really the only only work I can do and I'm able to do at the moment. I can't imagine of being in any other kind of job. So I, you know, I have to sacrifice a little bit for, for this. But when I get home, I just uh, simply try to spend time with my family and I want to spend as little time as possible outside of home, really. The return of the proud father to Wales was accompanied by more than just the usual dust, noise and mayhem of modern rallying. For Ari had brought with him a new determination. Hanu Mikola was again his biggest threat. We are fighting uh, with Ari very much and uh, he is leading a uh, few seconds now. I was trying to suggest that uh, he would hold these positions till the end of the rally but uh, Hanu didn't agree. Maybe he's going to have a go at me. But uh, at the moment you're managing to stay ahead though, obviously. Well, you know, four seconds is absolutely nothing, but, you know, keeps it exciting.
some rules on the road. So I hit it and Hannu hit it and so we have an identical driving line. Where was this? Run, run down, run down. If you want to try them. Or rat, or rat now, something like that. We've got some clear lenses if you want to try them later. Okay. Driving at the peak of his form once more, it's quite clear that an addition to the family can do wonders for your confidence. And on the Welsh, the tables are turned. Vartman is in command. Harry, congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic weekend for you. Your wife gives birth to a baby, a girl, and now you win the Welsh Rally. How do you feel? Yeah, well, I mean, anybody can win the Welsh Rally, but to have a nine and a half pound, you know, girl, that's something. Yeah. You know, I have always said that I don't really have, uh, you know, ambitious uh, in the way you, you mean it. I just want to do my job as well as I can, and uh, if I then... Uh, you know, manage to win the rallies, if I manage to win the World Championship one day, you know, I don't mind, they are the side effects. But I take every rally as it comes and I try to do my best uh, at that point of time. Here we go, folks. <laughs> Ari's best will lead him to the top, but he has to consider his path beyond there. My father was a farmer and uh, you know, when, when you are a farmer, you are part of nature, really. You you plant your your crops and things and uh, you see them grow and you cannot really say, say that you how well you want them to grow you you are you you really feel that then the life is in a bigger hand and uh, when you get the harvest you really feel satisfied and that is the sort of work i would like to do later do you think a lot of people are missing a lot out of life then by not having your outlook well it's uh, you know i'm not the one to touch anybody else's life but that's how it has uh, turned out to be in my case. But let's say generally that uh, people miss out if they don't stop to think about life. Ari consolidates his Welsh victory by winning the rugged Acropolis and then returns for the Scottish. Ari is in, in very good uh, mood to drive and uh, this um, bad luck he had had very long time. Uh, I think he has sorted out uh, his driving and and he has got the confidence so he will be really a difficult man to beat. Hannah is incredibly difficult to beat even you know even if we could beat him and it's more important than the championship situation on this rally for us. So you're hoping to clinch the championship impact on this event? Well I must admit say it would uh, you know it, I could secure it here. Two events that I was set out to win this year was the circuit and this one so we've got the circuit over we're going to try hard for this one it's a very rough and grueling event i think the secret is to be there at the end and you know try and be in a, a decent position i don't think you could drive flat out in this event from start to finish with the sheep out of his way, Hanu is in no mood to hang around, and over the ruthlessly sharp flints that abound on Scotland's forest stages, Ari, returned from the euphoria of his first ever World Championship win, is relegated to second. Mikola is getting his revenge. Hanu's 
leading, he's just going like a train now, but um, who's second? I wouldn't like to say. Kulang's going quite quickly. You know, we're going reasonably. I would, hopefully we're in just about second place. Someone else going very quickly is Cumbria's Malcolm Wilson, despite problems. How's it going? Oh, we had a, two punches on the last stage and we feel we've broken the front suspension, so we're going to have to change the front suspension. Very few of those drivers who are really trying escape the carnage of punctures, which each year on this rally provide the tyre companies with as many headaches as they do sales. You're running. 15th car, you know, there's more rocks and things to hit, it's, it's pretty difficult. We had two punctures yesterday which dropped us a minute and a half. We were up to 9th, now we're back to 11th, so it's, uh, it's just one of these things. The strain of a gruelling drive overnight, combined with the after-effects of the tough Acropolis rally the previous week, begins to show as Ari arrives at the breakfast halt early on Sunday. Morning, Ari. Morning, morning. What sort of a night have you had? Slow night. What do you mean? Well, you know, driving slowly. You're still second, though? Yes, 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 just about, just about. But they're getting up fast, so I don't know how long we will be second. Why uh, have you been driving slowly? It's a holiday time for me, not a rolling time. <laughs> I see. What's happened down here, Ari? Uh... Mine off. No time lost. No time lost? No. So what's your tactics for the rest of the rally then? Well, try to wake up. Another man who's finding fatigue hard to shake off is Malcolm Wilson, who is nevertheless setting the rally alight with a performance to equal the Finns. Oh, you're looking a bit, a bit knackered. You know, <laughs> I don't know how you put it. <laughs> Pretty tough night, is it? Yeah, it's been very hard. I don't know why. It seems a lot harder than the Welsh, and we've just done the same amount. I don't, can't understand it. If the Scottish rally is taking its toll of drivers, then so too is it taking its toll in mechanical terms. Special Stage 21 begins to resemble a parking lot for broken down rally cars. As first, the Saab of Stig Blomquist expires with a broken drive shaft. And then it's Tim Bryce's turn, as his Escort's engine expires with an air-conditioned block. So the oil pressure's been uh, up and down all day and uh, unfortunately just coming up the hill there, uh, something's let go in the engine and that's it, we're out. As Roger Clark's TR7 goes by, Blomquist's Swedish co-driver Bjorn Sederborg is acting as part-time traffic warden. We can park at least three more here. To win rallies, you've got to get to the end of them, and any driver to win has to have an ultra reliable car, and uh, we've managed to produce that for him this year. To start with, I wasn't very interested in driving, I must, I must confess that. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe the Acropolis is catching, was catching me out now. And uh, but then yesterday I got it going a bit better. What about today? Then you're just going to yeah, cruising along today. Uh, have a nice day now. Pleasant. Would you have liked to have increased your lead on Ari then, if you could have? Done? Not really, but you know it's. Uh, Two minutes, uh, a little bit over two minutes is just the time what it takes to change the tyre. You know, so that, that's the thing what I have to keep. The champagne is only just around the corner for Hanu, but as he heads towards another gruelling session with the cork, the Rothmans Manx will mark the finale to Vatnan's triumphant year.
The Isle of Man hosts a rally different from all the others. The Rothmans Manx is a rally with its own unique code. 50, caution, Titans left, maybe over brow. On the pace note events, we're allowed to look at the stages beforehand and we write a, a very precise series of notes of the stages. The notes describe every single bend, its angle, and then the distance between the bends. So when it comes to the rally itself, it's my responsibility then to read the notes back to Ari in the sort of context of the road as it sort of comes up. Obviously, you're a couple of corners ahead just to anticipate everything that the, the driver's wanting to know about around the next corner. Right, left, 50, flat left, 20 right. 50, slippy flat right maybe. 70, flat right, 50 flat left. The numbers are all the distances, or approximate distances left. in meters. And then everything else is a, a basic description on left and right, a variable on left and right. So you've got sort of from minus left and hairpin left, which are the very tight corners, right the way through the scale to absolute left, which is absolutely flat out as it sounds. Absolute left, 150, flat left of a brow, 50, brow, 250, double caution, narrow, medium left. It gives me a lot more responsibility instead of sitting there like in the forest where there's not an awful lot I can do. But here on this rally, rarely, if, for instance, in fog, the driver's literally driving on the instructions from the co-driver. You can, you've almost got hold of the steering wheel. And K right, maybe. 120, left, right. When you have a professional co-driver, he's not on your way of winning. But if you have a bad co-driver, he can make mistakes and uh, jeopardize uh, good driver's chances. This morning it was, it was raining and now it stopped, so we thought we'd change from intermediate tyres onto slicks. It could be worth a couple of seconds a mile with, with these tyres against intermediate ones. Do you prefer wet or dry conditions? Do you have any preference? I definitely prefer dry, yes. So it looks like it's drying out then? So, so well, I hope so. That's a gamble we take anyway. So. And who is going to be the man to beat? Well, at least this time it's the British one, Tony Pond, definitely. I mean, he will have a the heads over the rest of us. All these guys are very good. It's going to be uh, the man who just gets his act together and happens to be on the right tyres at the right time. If we get some twisty stages, I think we can beat the TR, but on the open stages, it is power, we, we're struggling. But uh, we'll just need to keep our fingers crossed. One car better not working properly uh, on the engine of the first couple of stages, but uh, the mechanics have sorted it now and it's okay. We lost, you know, actually even a few minutes in the stage now. So. Tony Bond caught us on the previous stage, he left two minutes behind us, and, and still he caught us, so we lost two minutes on that stage. So, still. How many petrol? Eight gallons. Well okay, another couple of minutes, please. Just two more minutes. I think realistically, my chances of winning have gone, but uh, still, I can give them a bit of stick here. How's it going this morning for you so far? Slowly in the middle of the road, little champion. I want a little more power. Some might not have enough power, but John Weatherly's quite happy. I've never had this power car on a proper tarmac rally. We're going to say we're going on the safe side of flat out, yes. <laughs> the dangerous side of flat out comes later. <laughs> Thank you very much.
There are, of course, a number of other ways of attacking a bend. There's the no-nonsense, safety-first, BSM-style three-point turn, as demonstrated here by Mr. Wagner. Then there's the Godfrey Jones Group 1 approach, not exactly to be recommended. Graham Elsmore employs a bit of West Country brawn, while Godfrey's brother David keeps it neat. Malcolm Patrick takes a leaf out of David Jones' book, but it's left to the Irish to steal the show, as John Lyons proves that a Polish Polonaise can go almost anywhere. in the mighty TR7 dominates the Manx, but Wagner and his Rothmans rally team car is fighting back up through the field. Do you know how much time you took off Pond on that one? Well, nearly 20 seconds. But I think he had some incidents, maybe. So you're going to be able to maintain this, do you think? Well, let's see how it goes. It's very much a... You know, I drive according to a condition. If it starts raining and, you know, maybe I back off, there's no... No point in trying too hard, but you know, when I enjoy driving, then I, you know, then I will have a go. But you're obviously enjoying it this morning. Yes, very much so. That was due to an um, incomplete wrecking. So, yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, and uh, due to the fact that we were trying a little bit too hard. What, what did you hit, in fact? Well, we demolished one bank. <laughs> we don't hit things, we demolish things. <laughs> all still OK? Yes. yes. Nearly all over now? Yeah, well, a bit more to do, isn't there? A couple more stages. Yes, well, hope it's going to be able to. What's Jimmy McRae is in the process of losing second place to the charging Finn in the Rothmans Escort. The Chevette is a forlorn victim to a series of mechanical mishaps as depressing as the steadily falling rain. Jim, what do you have to do on the stage? Do you have to stop on the stage, do you? Yeah, the car stopped and we had to uh, just, we didn't know what it was, changed the ignition pack, then found out that the rotor arm and the distributor had broken up. You changed it yourself? Changed it yourself, uh -huh. but the engine, you know, was red hot. <laughs> and I think we lost around about six and a half minutes to Tony. And it drops us down now to third place, I think, behind Ari, about two minutes behind him. So, after a totally dominant drive, Tony Pond powers on to be Manx Meister once again. A fine result to crown all those hard weeks of practice. For Ari, a storming climb through the field results in second place. More than good enough to ensure him of his second British title just five years after he first arrived in Britain. An unknown and unknowing Finnish youth in a battered opal. Times have indeed changed. Four years ago I won my first British championship and it is already four years ago and, and I feel that uh, it was like a yesterday. And, uh, you know, that thing and many other things make me to realise how, how quickly the life goes past, really, here on the earth. And uh, therefore, you know, recently I've realised that it is, how wrong it is if, uh, if for example, if uh, in my life the priority number one was rallying. And, uh, you know, I feel there is, uh, you know, I feel that, you know, we are created by God, you know, all the human beings, and, uh, you know, we are not only meant to live 70 years, which is very, very short time indeed. We are meant to live in the eternity. And uh, in today's world, in this uh, 
busy business and in this busy life in, in nowadays. You know, we very easily we only think about uh, this life, you know, from a day by day basis and uh, not not any further. And uh, you know, the God and His plan for my life comes first, and let's say marriage comes next, and uh, then comes the rallying. But still, I want to do my rallying as well as I can.